All right, he is our Cardinals lead writer and part of the Cardinals Corner podcast. Tyler Drake joins uh, me and Tim Ring. Talk a little Cardinals football here. Free agency in full swing. Tyler, just initial thoughts on, on yesterday. Getting the two defensive linemen, getting the cornerback, getting the linebacker. Really addressing some needs they had on defense. Yeah, yeah. I really thought exactly what you said. They dressed the needs, and they did it in a way that I think was a little different than we saw last offseason. You know, it was really down to one-year, two-year deals. This time around, you're seeing these three-year deals pop up, a little bit more money getting shelled out. I think the quality of player, the caliber of players a little bit uh, has improved a little bit there. So, a step in the right direction. I'd say it's the phase two of this rebuild, reset, whatever you want to call it. I know they don't like to call it a rebuild, but yeah. I would say it's really, you're seeing kind of that next step originate right now i know a lot of the fans wanted like a christian wilkins i know there was some reports that the cardinals were going to go heavy after him in free agency i have reported sunday morning that was not the case they were not looking at that one big free agent they were not looking at wilkins they really wanted to address some needs they're not one player away they wanted to spread it out and try to get four or five guys and come in here and play right away and that's exactly what they did Mm -hmm. mid-tier free agents i think i reported sunday morning look Mm -hmm. for the cardinals to be very active with the mid-tier free agents all four of those guys fit that bill. Mid-tier yep. free, you're not overpaying for them. Yep. Yes, they're getting paid a lot, but they could come in, slide in, start for them. And again, you're not breaking the bank to get those guys. Yeah, yeah. And one guy that I, I think is very interesting is Mac Wilson Sr. Because he went from kind of a middle inside linebacker to playing more he, on the edge. He was one of my favorite signings. And and I think it's I think he's going to be one of those projects. I would almost consider him like a Josh Woods last year. It was a guy that played a lot more on special teams, but they gave him that chance defensively and he showed you what he could do. And he and, could cover. And that's the thing is he Mac can Wilson cover. can do a little bit of everything it looks like. So yeah. if you can really get him in there and really move him around versatility, that's huge for this organization. Yeah. So I think that's a really interesting signing. So and obviously when you look at the defensive tackles I mean, they've started every game the last two seasons. That's yep. that's all you want right now. Availability, Availability is key. Guys that can plug the holes. They're, they're not going to pop on the stat sheet, those guys. Yeah. They're, they're not going to pop on the stat sheet, but you need that beef inside. But I agree with you. Uh, the, 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 you know, Mac Wilson, like that, his ability to cover tight ends, his ability to cover running backs, that's going to come in handy. And then, listen, they needed a cornerback. They yep. got a guy who's a former second-round pick, won a Super Bowl. His numbers don't grade out the best at pro football focus, but I'm not the biggest fan of that anyway. Yeah. But it gives you some size. It gives you some length. He's still very, relatively young. They didn't go after the 35-year-old guy. So I kind of like what they did there addressing the cornerback need. Yeah, definitely. I think that was one of my favorite signings just because they got it out of the way real quick. Obviously, they can still look at another veteran, maybe think about bringing Antonio Hamilton back for some more veteran presence in the locker room. But, yeah, you just bring in a guy that has proven it. He's been to the biggest stage. So you get that guy in the locker room and help these young guys mold, just get molded a little bit more heading into year two. The Starling Thomases, the Keytrail Clarks, the Garrett Williams. I think that's a great addition. I really do. And and like you said, it's not the flashiest, but it's guys who have, I think, proven themselves in the league who can be a starter day in and day out. Is Justin Jones here to start, Tyler, or is he a depth guy? Or is it TBA? I think it's – obviously, we're going to see the competition because this team is built on competition. But I do think he's a front runner to be a starter. I, I think he has the potential to be that kind of guy. Let me ask you this. With the draft now – and you know, Gamo and I kind of kicked this around earlier. We don't think it will impact their draft, but any of these four signings perhaps alter the way the Cardinals select early in this year's draft? I don't think so. I, I, think I don't think so either, but I want to get your thoughts. Yeah, on. yeah. I think it's still the same same course. You've got those those really big positions that you can really address with those first three picks at least, uh, you know, four, 27, 35. You can still really go out there and get – a wide receiver prospect that they des- desperately need to get. They got to get an, a number one guy. Uh, you know, offensive tackle is another thing. Uh, you look at a pass rusher. I mean, there's another cornerback in there too. I mean, Tyrion Arnold and JG having that conversation at the combine was was a, a great, I think, example of the type of player they're looking for, and he could fit that mold. How do you get there? You might have to trade around some things, but or McKinstry could be available at 27. Too. I mean, that fracture that fracture that they reported could easily drop him down there into that range. So there's a lot of ways this team can go to really take that next step even further. Like, and I think we all have to go back to what Monty said: the free agency, you're, you're overpaying for people. When it comes to the draft, that's when you can really, yeah. you know, hit those home runs, really make those giant strides forward that they're trying to make sooner rather than later. That's why I think that the heavy lifting and free agency is done. Um, my understanding is that it is. They'll look for value signings now. 
Uh, the prices will start to come down as guys realize that, hey, I didn't sign day one, day two, day three. Uh, five teams that were interested in me, they all went somewhere else. So value signings, they're not done in free agency. There will be some value signings, but I think the majority of the heavy lifting for them is finished. Yep, yep. And I think another thing would be looking at maybe some of the other in-house free agents that they've got, bring them back on a, on a one, two-year deal. Yeah, I think I'm expecting you know, Aaron Brewer to sign. Definitely. Uh, and Elijah Wilkinson. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't like him, but I'm expecting those to get done. Maybe today okay. on both of those. The Wilkinson and Brewer could be today, if not tomorrow. And then they've got to look at what they're going to do at the backup quarterback spot. They do. They you know, do you go after do. do you go after the, the Huntley kid in Baltimore, Mason Rudolph from Pittsburgh? There are still some decent backup quarterbacks out there. I'm very curious to see what they're going to do there. Yeah, I think they've got to get another veteran voice in there. Just, you know, Clayton Toon. Going into year two, obviously, you could consider him maybe the backup, but I think getting another veteran voice in there to at least compete with them in training camp, maybe push him a little bit, would, would could go a long way with just filling out that room. Also, a veteran guy helps Kyler with game prep. Mm-hmm. I mean, kind of filling that Colt McCoy role. Uh, Tyler, do you have a do you have a have you heard anything? And if you haven't, no big deal. But do you have a gut feeling then on Hollywood Brown? Ooh. I, I, like so, what's the market out there for him? Clearly, not not nothing not yet. I mean, he's probably <laughs> one of the top wide receivers still left right now in free agency so it just really comes down to how much does he want and how much are the cardinals willing to pay i think and the draft the problem the problem that, that he's too. having is that it is a deep yep. deep deep wide receiver draft yep. and teams aren't going to overpay for hollywood brown yeah and, and and i think really if there was going to be a reunion a reunion it would have to be on a one-year prove it type deal i don't think there's a multi-year <clears throat> deal that the that could really work for two sides right now between the two would you want hollywood brown back on a one-year prove it deal I would take him back only if you can guarantee you're going to get another uh, wide receiver one. That That's what it comes down to because as much as I think Hollywood Brown has flashed being that potential guy, I don't think he's there. Well, and they I, didn't sign anybody in free agency a wide receiver. Exactly. No, they haven't signed anybody And I anybody think the draft yet, is so. going to tell us a lot. They're, they're going to draft a number one. Yep. And what, do you believe in Michael Wilson as a as a number two? Not healthy enough. That's, yep. Uh, it's been that, one year. I mean, don't bury the kid yet. I'm going bury him, but I mean, I just don't know that I can count on him. I mean, he's got to play a full season to show me that he can do it. Yeah, he's got to show his availability. And then you've got, you know, you've got Rondell Moore, who was kind of more running back wide receiver last okay, but that, year. Now, see, that's like, that's a guy I don't believe in. He's, okay. been, he's been here long enough and he hasn't popped and he hasn't shown enough like yeah i mean hollywood brown has done it in this league he that's has. why i i would I, I if they could bring him back on a one year prove it deal and have him as a as insurance a policy to, yeah a slot guy would have him as yeah as number 2 guy with, with yeah with marvin harrison junior and and, and improving hopefully healthy Michael Wilson and Dorch can kind of fill a role yep. still the as other well. Guy, the other guy to keep your eye on, too, is Antonio Hamilton. Yep. Like, no interest so far in him. I'm sure the Cardinals would like to bring him back. But again, at this point, value deals. Every deal for the Cardinals, because they spent their money on four guys, it's going to have to be a value deal. There's not a ton of money left. Remember, you still got to save money for injured reserve. Yep. You gotta, you're got you signing your own guys. That costs money. And then your rookie pool yep. got the is going to cost you money. So, you know, there's not that much money left to go sign guys. Again, I still expect that they'll sign a few guys, but probably value guys. But keep your eye on Antonio Hamilton. I wonder what you know, they've always liked him. Yeah. And even like Hollywood Brown, they like him, but it has to be on their terms if they're going to get those guys. Yep. Yep. All right, Tyler, good job. Appreciate it. What's good stuff, uh, brother? What's the next podcast coming out? I think we're coming uh, coming back in Friday, so definitely Friday. Be on the lookout. Cardinals Corner yep. Pod on Friday. All right, Can't we appreciate wait. it. <laughs> Let's ArizonaSports.com. You can see all of Tyler's stories up on ArizonaSports.com. Thanks for watching Burns and Gambo. Click to see more from the guys and hit the button in the middle to subscribe so you never miss a video from Arizona Sports.